Welcome to another Control Hobbies video tutorial. This video will show you how to create maps that you can use with the GPS map widgets. The GPS map widget provides a visual and real-time location of your model during flight. The information presented on the radio map includes distance, altitude, speed, location, and the number of satellites used for computation. It can also provide audible notifications to the pilot map limits exceeded. when a map boundary is crossed when no-fly zones are present for the active map. This tutorial will show you how to create, calibrate, and install the map. We will also show you how to set up notifications and discuss a few advanced topics. To make use of all the features the GPS map has to offer, you will need the following. A Graupner MZ16 or MZ32 radio with firmware version 2 or higher. This should include resources such as voice and help files for that release. To record the flight tracks, you will need a compatible GPS module, such as the Hot GPS module made by Grapner or the GPS Logger 3 made by SM Modelbaugh. You will also need mapping software such as Google Maps, Bing Maps, or Windows Maps which you can find on the internet. To create the map, you will need access to graphics software for resizing and cropping the image. The required image format for the map is a Windows bitmap image, sized at 480 by 214 pixels at 72 dpi and 24 bit. In this tutorial, we will be using Windows Maps and Windows Paint 3D, which are part of Windows 10, and therefore, no additional software is needed. In this tutorial, we will be creating a map for the Sacramento Valley Soaring Society Flying Field in Davis, California. To start Windows Maps, click on the Windows search icon and type Maps to load the program. After starting Windows Maps, we need to locate the flying field. You can enter an address, latitude and longitude, or pan and zoom the map until you find your desired location. After locating the flying field, we need to decide how we would like the map to be oriented on our radio. The GPS map can have only a north, south, east, or west orientation. The orientation you will choose will most likely depend on the layout of the field. You will likely select a map orientation that gives you the best view of the field's designated flying area. The map orientation will also depend on where you are positioned at the flying field. You can have multiple maps for the same flying field showing different orientations that can be used depending on wind directions or field requirements. Note that Windows map orientations always points to the north when started. You can change the map orientation by clicking on the compass needle on the map toolbar. In this example, Windows Maps shows the landing zone oriented south to north, which places the pilot facing the flying site to the east. To optimize the view for the pilot we will need to rotate the map so that it will point to an easterly direction from the pilot's perspective. Zoom in or out of the map to get a wide aerial view of the area you would like to cover. You can create multiple maps of the same area at different zoom levels. For example, if you fly sailplanes, you may want a map area with a wider view than when you fly with a helicopter closer to the field. The next step is to take a screenshot of the map. You can use the Windows Print Screen feature or Windows Snip and Sketch Utility to mark and select the capture area on the screen. Make sure you capture a larger area than required as we will be resizing the captured image later. The next step is to load your graphics software to resize and prepare the image for installing on your radio. In this tutorial, we will be using Windows Paint 3D. After launching Paint 3D, a welcome screen provides several options to choose from. Click on the new option to load the editor. You can load the map by either entering Ctrl V to paste the previously captured image in the editor or you can load the image from your computer. Next we need to crop and resize the image so that it will be compatible with the radio. The required image's size is 480 by 214 pixels. Click on the crop option on the menu bar which brings up the crop menu. In the width field enter 480 and for the height enter 214. Check the lock aspect ratio checkbox. Now we need to adjust the frame to cover the map area we would like to have. 
This is done by moving the white handles for sizing and by dragging the frame to the desired position. This will determine the actual map coverage used on your radio. The map coverage should reflect the actual flying area you intend to fly. Some RC clubs may have maps that show the allowed fly zones which you can use as reference for sizing your map. At this point, you have the option to add additional graphic elements to the map. This is optional, but can significantly enhance situational awareness by highlighting specific areas on the map which provide visual cues, such as distance structures, electrical poles, landing or warning zones, and more. Let's add a few graphic features to our map. To add graphic elements, we will switch to the 2D Shapes page. On top of the map, there are a group of trailers we can use as a reference to show how far out we are from our flying position. We will highlight it with a star shape. Next, we would like to mark the landing zones, which we can do with a few rectangle shapes on the map. You can continue enhancing the map with visuals as much as your creativity allows. When you are satisfied with your image, it can now be sized it to the final dimensions of 480 by 214 pixels. Select the canvas menu to enter the image dimensions so it will be properly sized and scaled. Make sure that in the resize canvas the lock aspect ratio and resize image with canvas are checked. Enter 480 in the width dimensions. The height should be automatically calculated showing 214 pixels. Sometimes, there may be some number rounding issues when calculating the height, resulting in a different number such as 213 pixels. This can be manually corrected by unchecking the lock aspect ratio option and entering the correct number, 214. The image is now finished and can be saved to your computer or directly on the radio. Click on the menu button and select Save As. Choose the image file format and select Save as Type 2D bitmap bmp which is the proper format for our map image if your radio is connected to your computer you can save the file to the maps folder or to any folder of your choice on your computer the next step is to find the longitude and latitude of the map this is needed for the radio so it will be able to accurately show the airplane moving over the map we do this by finding the map coordinates of the upper left corner and the bottom right corner using windows maps this will be entered later on the radio. Let's get started. With Windows Maps on our screen, we now need to closely match the location of the upper left corner of the image with the map. You can place the previously created image side by side next to Windows Maps to assist you with locating and marking the locations. The closer you can match the location on the map, the more accurate the map will be. You can always make later small changes to the coordinates on the radio. There are a few visual cues we can use to find our coordinates such as roads, grass fields, or any other objects that stand out. In our case, the upper left corner of the image seems to match up well with this location on the map so we can mark it by dropping a pin. Right-click on the mouse and select Drop a Pin. The location will now be marked on the map. A dialog will present itself with additional information, including the longitude and latitude of that location. Next we need to find the coordinates of the lower right corner. Zoom or pan the map to find the next location on the map that closely matches with image on the bottom right corner and drop a pin to mark that spot. Next, we need to copy the longitude and latitude of our map coordinates. Those will be later used on the radio to calibrate our map. Select the first dialog with the upper left corner coordinates and select the longitude and latitude and copy them in a text editor such as Notepad. Select the second dialog, copy the second set of longitude and latitude and paste them under the previously set of coordinates. In our next steps, we will edit and prepare the coordinates to enter in our radio. The GPS map widget can only accept latitude and longitude values in decimal format. Some mapping software may show their coordinates in degrees, minutes, and seconds, which must be converted to decimals units. When using Google, Windows, or Bing Maps, the latitude and longitude coordinates are shown in decimal format, therefore no conversions are needed. Map coordinates are dependent on your location on Earth. 
A location can be in the northern hemisphere, which is north of the equator, or south of the equator, which is the southern hemisphere, and measured as latitude. Our secondary reference point is whether we are in the western hemisphere, which is west of the prime meridian, or east of the prime meridian, which is the eastern hemisphere, and measured as longitude. For example, if you live in the United States, your latitude and longitude coordinates will show that you are located in the northern and western hemisphere. Before we can enter our latitude and longitude coordinates on our radio, we need to format the previously obtained coordinates so that the radio can recognize them. An entry for both latitudes and longitudes of the upper left and lower right corners will be combined into a single entry on the radio as shown. A few rules must be adhered to. A coordinate always needs to have six digits behind the decimal. For example, if a coordinate has only five digits, we add zeros at the end of the coordinates to eliminate an incorrect position display on the radio. Map coordinates must be prefixed with the letter W or E when creating an westerly or easterly oriented map. The map we use for this tutorial has a westerly orientation and should be prefixed with the letter W. This is not required when a map has a northern or southern orientation. The latitudes for the SVSS flying field are as shown below. The first entry is our upper left latitude. We remove the decimal and we append the letter N at the end since the coordinates are in the northern hemisphere. If the coordinates were located in the southern hemisphere, we would have had to append the letter S at the end. Next, we need to append the lower right latitude coordinates. We remove the decimal, and since the latitude has only five digits behind the decimal, we add a zero at the end as shown. Since this is a westerly oriented map, we prefix the map coordinates with the letter W as shown. Later, you will be entering these latitude coordinates on the radio. Now, we need to prepare our longitude coordinates similar to how we previously prepared the latitudes. The longitudes for the SVSS flying field are as shown below. The first entry is our upper left longitude. We remove the decimal and append the letter W at the end since the coordinates are in the western hemisphere. If the coordinates were located in the eastern hemisphere, we would have had to append the letter E at the end. Next, we need to append the lower right longitude coordinates and remove the decimal. Later, you will be entering these longitude coordinates on the radio as shown. At this point we have completed our map and we have also found our latitudes and longitudes coordinates which we can install and enter on the radio. To install the map you need to connect the radio to your computer with the supplied USB cable. Go to the system menu and tap on USB and then select mass storage. This allows you to access the radio SD card from your computer. Start Windows File Explorer and look for your radio from the available drives. Depending on your radio, the volume label name should read MZ16 or MZ32. Look for the Maps folder and copy your map to the Maps folder. Now that we have installed the map, we can load it on our screen. Select an empty widget deck with no other widgets installed, for example, deck number 6, and tap on a vacant block to add a widget. Scroll down to select the GPS option and select the map entry from the list. Next, tap on the large deck widget and tap OK to load the widget. With the map widget installed, we can now load the image on the screen. Tap on the map widget and then tap on edit on the dialog. Enter the file name of your widget, which in our example is SVSS, and tap on return. Our map image is now loaded ready for use. Our next and last step is to enter the latitude and longitude coordinates for our map. Each map has its own latitude and longitude coordinates. Make sure that there are no other decks where latitude and longitude widgets are installed to avoid confusing the radio. Select another empty deck and add a GPS latitude and longitude widget. You can also add a text label that references the coordinates to a map which can be handy if you have multiple maps installed. The first set of coordinates are our latitudes which we created earlier. Tap on the Latitude widget and select Edit from the GPS Latitude dialog. Enter the latitude values which were created earlier and tap on Enter to confirm. Do the same for the longitude values. 
Your GPS map widget is now active and ready to use. You can have the latitudes and longitudes widgets combined with other widgets and create decks that fit your needs. Make sure each map has its own set of latitudes and longitudes widgets which need to be entered on the deck preceding each map widget. You can experiment with making maps of your home location and test different settings while driving around in your car to get a hang of it. If your map is not accurate enough, check your latitude and longitude entries or try to recapture them again with greater accuracy. The radio can provide user notifications when the airplane is outside of the map coordinates. Map limit west exceeded. Notifications can be set individually for the north, south, east or west direction or globally when any of the map boundaries have been crossed. For example, you can create a notification for when a pilot accidentally crosses a designated flight line or for when a flying boundary has been crossed. After the airplane's flight path has been corrected and is flown back to the designated flying zone, it will notify the pilot that the airplane is inside the map. Inside Map Limit Setting up a notice is easy and is done from the special menu on the User Notice menu. Tap on the plus icon to add a notification. Select the GPS module and look for the available map notifications and select the one you would like to use. This concludes the installation and setup tutorial for the GPS map widget. We thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or need additional support, you can contact us at controlhobbies.com.